today I'm still in the car I'm in traffic but I was supposed to already be to my destination by 8 o'clock to do this live but I'm still going to go ahead and kick it off and then if I get a little bit closer I'll hop off and hop back on but um I wanted to clear up right so well let's let's do this let's officially move the live to 8 30 <laughs> just in case because there's no way i'm going to be able to teach what i need to teach y'all these seven strategies and driving through traffic without doing something dangerous but i do want to clear up while i'm on here what i mean when i say creating more dependable income because i got questions in my dms i got comments on the post and i think i didn't really explain it the way that I should have explained it okay there's a difference in between making a lot of money and making consistent money like a lot of money is like oh I had a launch and there was a huge injection of cash flow I had a lot of payments and blah 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 right and then there's making consistent money which is I make the same amount of money around the same amount of money each month I know for a fact if I work this many hours or if I do this this and this I'm gonna make about this much money like that is when you have a sustainable business launching 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 all the time is not necessarily sustainable it can be if you have the right systems in place and that piece is the piece that a lot of people are missing. They're like, you see people launching and over and over and over again and coming out with this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And those people are really just content creators. I'm one of them. I'm a content creator. It's why I come out with stuff all the time. But you don't have to do that to have a sustainable business. Like you could just have one or two really good things and run a sustainable business. You don't have to be pushing out a whole lot of content. Honestly, I just do it because that's who I am. I like it, I'm good at it. But everybody's not good at that. But you can have a really great business with one or two really core offers, three max core offers, okay? So what's happening to a lot of the people that I'm talking to and a lot of clients is that uh, you are launching or coming out with something new or you're booking and then like there's a lot of pay in full going on which is great pay I love paying full but there is a distinct advantage to payment plans that people need to really take account of okay like payment plans are not bad they're good for you and they're good for the other person they attract people who are very strategic with their money but they also give you the ability to be able to forecast your income yes i saw someone comment and say depend a predictable income exactly predictable income if you use stripe as a payment processor you can actually log into your stripe and on the dashboard home screen there is a section called mrr that is what you need to be looking at okay MRR stands for monthly recurring revenue that means if you don't do anything this month how much money are you going to make from people who are on payment plans and people who are on subscriptions right like if you just do the bare minimum in your business that's how much money you'll make this month if you don't release anything new um, if you don't do any new marketing because this only it only counts people who are already on a subscription or already on a payment plan that number is going to be like your baseline for predictable income the key to working less hours and just the key to having a balanced business period is having that number as high as you possibly can because you never know what's gonna happen to you. You may get sick and then you can't work. Like I got sick when was that last the week before last week. I was sick the whole week, went to the hospital and everything. I was still making money because I have an MRR that's pretty decent. I know, hey, I can chill, not do nothing all month, and I'll make in between ten to fifteen thousand dollars. I don't even have to go live if I don't want to. That's where my monthly recurring revenue is hanging out at, right? So 
when I shared the reel, and this is where the idea for this live came from, seven ways to generate more consistent income. When I shared that reel with those seven strategies, I don't think people understood, you better save this shit because this is going to help you build a higher baseline. If you haven't quit your job yet, this is the turning point that is going to help you quit your job. Okay, it's going to help you quit your job because a job is what it's consistent revenue over and over again that, you know, all I have to do is do the bare minimum clock in, clock out, fulfill my job responsibilities, do this, do this, whatever. There's a list, right? As long as I do these things, my salary is hitting on the first and the 15th or the fourth and the 24th or whatever, whatever yours is, right? You know, you're going to get paid as long as you do that bare minimum. So you can treat your business that way and have a baseline and when you have a baseline like that and you're not on an income roller coaster where it's like oh my god i made twenty thousand dollars oh i made three thousand dollars this month oh my god i made ten thousand dollars oh i made two thousand dollars this month when you're not on an income roller coaster like that and you actually have a high mrr monthly recurring revenue then you can think long term you can think longer term you can plan out like paying your bills or pay your bills ahead of time <clears throat> you can look at adding a new team member or hiring your first team member putting somebody on payroll when your income is a lot more consistent you can actually build your business and have a sustainable business which you can eventually if you're service-based you can eventually remove yourself from the business actually no anything if you're service-based you can remove yourself from the business if you're product-based you can remove yourself from the business i actually think it's easier if you're a product-based business to remove yourself from the business once your mrr hits a certain number and everybody's number is different so i can't say hey you need to have ten thousand dollars monthly recurring revenue I can't say that. It depends on your business. Do you have somebody on payroll? How much do your supplies cost? How much are your systems costing you each month? How much are your bills? All this stuff needs to be written down. That's how I figured out where my MRR needs to get to so that when I go on maternity leave, I don't have to do nothing. I did it based off of that. It was based off of data and numbers. It wasn't a feeling like, oh, I think that I'm going to go on maternity leave then this day and i think i'm gonna come back on this day it just depends on how i feel no it was data it was it was i looked at it as if it was a math problem and figured it out okay so you have to write down what all those numbers are for you and then from there you can determine okay what does my monthly recurring revenue need to be and in order to hit that monthly recurring revenue number how much do I how much money do I need to be, have on payment plans okay so here's an example I'm gonna pull over so I can like actually teach this um, so here's an example if you have a program that is three thousand dollars this is one of the figures that I use to figure out my maternity leave if you have a program that costs three thousand dollars and you give someone the option to get on a payment plan for five hundred dollars a month $500 a month for $3,000 equals out <coughs> to about six months. If you have 10 people enrolled in that program, if you decide, hey, I'm gonna market my butt off for the next five weeks, and my goal is to get 10 people enrolled in my $3,000 program, which is a very realistic number, and they and you want them all to go in on the payment plan, right? Somebody's probably gonna pay in full, which is totally fine, totally fine. But tell people that you have payment plans because the payment plan is going to benefit your MRR. So if you get 10 people in on a $500 a month payment plan for a $3,000 program for six months, you know for the next six months, I got $5,000 a month coming in automatically recurring. All I have to do is fulfill whatever I said I was going to fulfill in this program. That's it. Whether that's weekly coaching or whether it's pre-recorded i have some programs that are pre-recorded and they're bringing in mrr and i'm not doing nothing i don't have to do nothing i'm getting bi-weekly payments so it could be monthly payments it could be bi-weekly payments but that that lets you know okay 
I know I'm going to have $5,000 as my baseline for the next six months. Now let me think about either how I can get more people into this program on a payment plan so that my baseline can be a little bit higher or let me think about an upsell for the end of this program because when they come out of this program at the end of six months, they're going to want to go into something else. So uh, let me figure out what else they can go into to keep this MRR going. Okay. This is how businesses like Netflix are running subscriptions because subscriptions is one of the ways you can have a baseline MRR. Now, I know somebody's thinking, well, what happens if somebody doesn't pay their payment plan? Then what? Right? So the key with getting someone to, or or not even getting someone to pay their payment plan, the key to attracting someone who's going to fulfill their payment plan, like actually pay all the payments, is to market to someone who makes way more than what your program costs or marketing to someone who has a mindset to fulfill the payment plan. So that piece comes in on the marketing end, not on the, I'm gonna sign up all these people on a payment plan and hope that they actually pay it. Because everybody doesn't pay out their payment plans, right? Like stuff happens, right? So you want to attract someone, let's just say if the program is $3,000, you wanna attract someone who's making at least three to three and a half times a month what your program is gonna cost them a month apartments do this apartments do this um uh mortgage what do you call them not mortgage brokers the lenders do this <clears throat> they want to look at your what your debt to income ratio why are they doing that because they want to see if you're going to actually fulfill the payment plan because that's going into their mrr this is how credit card companies make money too okay so you can use it as a small business owner you don't got to be a Fortune 500 company to use what they're using, to use the strategies they're using. So if, if you are, look at the price of your program, how much those payment plans break down into month by month, and you can decide however you want your payment plan to be set up. It's up to you. And then market it to somebody who has three to three and a half times that money to give away each month, Okay. So if you got a program this a thousand dollars and you have a, a payment plan option, that's what that would break down to three hundred and thirty three dollars a month. But you know, if you have a pro a, a payment plan that's three hundred dollars a month, you want to market that program to someone who has at least nine hundred dollars a month to give away to give away. Okay, because you have to be thinking like, okay listens people gotta pay rent too so it can't just be a 900 they make a 900 dollars flat they gotta make more than that all right now price it i'm not saying adjust your pricing to fit the person i'm saying find the person that fits your pricing you set your price first then figure out the payment plan options you want to offer. Then that will tell you what type of person you need to be marketing to. Stop marketing to broke folks. Stop marketing to broke folks. Like, just stop. Just, just They need to be focused on other shit. Like, <laughs> okay. If you want to help people that you know don't have the money, then those people need like ebooks. Lead freely, really quality free lead magnets, uh, low cost ebooks, um, maybe like a short mini course, something small, okay, something small that does not involve a lot of your energy, that does not involve really much of to any of your energy, and something that doesn't cost that much. That is what you market to everybody. Everybody's like, oh, I want to market to everybody. You can market to everybody with a $20 ebook, $30 such and such, $40 templates, $20 such and class, $50, whatever. But when we're talking about four figure offers and four figure sales, boo, that's going on a payment plan. And you need to be aware of who you're talking to. All right. Now, I'm going to take out my laptop. <laughs> I'm going to 
gonna take out my laptop in the parking lot of the grocery store since I had to stop because it was traffic. And I'm going to pull up the seven strategies because I had them, I had them saved in my live, but um, I'm, I'm sorry, I had them saved on my phone, but I'm on my phone going live, so I can't, I can't share from my phone going live. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pull them up on here. Come on, Wi-Fi, give me something. There we go. There we go. Y'all can drop questions if y'all have questions while I'm doing this. Because I'll answer them. But that that's like the base of what you need to know when it comes to... When it comes down to it, okay? Alright, so... This is seven ways to generate more consistent income as a coach. So if anything I just said appeals to you, then there are seven ways that you can raise that MRR baseline level, okay? So number one is ongoing coaching. <clears throat> Instead of just having, uh, I mean, you, you need to... Instead of just having a program that's like 30 days or three months, look at having a program that's six months or 12 months. That was what I consider ongoing coaching. If you have something that is short or like a four week or a six week program, that's cool, but it's not going to give you a lot of monthly recurring revenue because it's not long enough, right? Like a four week program is just one month. A six week program is going to switch you into two monthly payments so you're only going to be able to forecast your income for two months okay so you want to look at something that's like six months 12 months that's why you see people that have really long programs like year-long programs because that allows them to forecast 12 months into the future and continuously enroll people so that that 12 months into the future that they can forecast never ends, right? So let's say, for example, if this is a lot to give away on a free live, but I need y'all to I need y'all to listen and, and save and really take this information. If you have if I launch a program today and it's 12 months long and I have 10 people join and they're paying five hundred dollars a month, right? That's five thousand dollars a month that I'm going to have for the next 12 months. Great. I could come back next week. The program could, I could leave the program open. I could come back next week and keep marketing and keep marketing, keep marketing it. Somebody can join next week and their 12 months is going to start at a different time than the people who started today. So that gives me an extra month because they joined a month after I started. So that gives me 13 months. If somebody joins in three months, then their 12 months is going to start when they join three months in the future, okay? What is it, April, May, June, July? So if somebody joins in July, they're going to be in the program until July 2023. If somebody joins today, they're going to be in the program until April 2023. So what happens is when your program is six or 12 months long and you leave the cart open, you can keep enrolling people, marketing the same program every week, Keep enrolling people and keep forecasting your income and your monthly recurring revenue is getting higher and higher and higher. It's very hard to keep track of this number if you don't have like a system that does it automatically for you, which is why I said if you use Stripe as a payment processor, as soon as you log into your dashboard, it will show you what that number is. If you have PayPal, you have to set up your automatic payment subscriptions like directly through them. It's a little weird. But you can connect your Stripe to different areas. Like you can connect your Stripe to your website, to lead pages, whatever. And people can pay for their monthly yada, yada, yada. Okay. So ongoing coaching is number one. Number two is a general membership. You can just have a membership. Hey, I have a membership. Each month we do one private class. We do um, this resource. We have these experts that are coming in each month. Blah, 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 blah. General membership. Put whatever you want in it. Don't put whatever you want in it. It don't matter. That's going to bring you a monthly recurring even, uh, revenue. Now, the thing with the general membership is that you're going to have some churn. What they call is churn. Churn is 
when people drop out of the membership because they're no longer interested or they're not using it or they couldn't pay for it this month so they're going to drop out and come back in whenever they can all that different kind of stuff that's called churn normally in a membership you lose people in between four to six months in that area i went through a membership training and that's the only reason why i know all this random information um but you lose people in between a four to six month mark and so you have to make sure that your membership is structured in a way that keeps people in keeps people involved um it helps if you have a membership <coughs> to hire someone like a community person a community supervisor or community liaison or client success person to keep people in and keep people interested okay monthly done for you service number three a monthly done for you service so this is for example um we do copywriting services so we have people who are on monthly email marketing every month they're on a subscription and every month it charges them for monthly email marketing we send them their emails for the month okay that keeps people in with done for you services monthly done for you services is like uh, like service subscriptions is a really good way to raise your MRR because once you start doing something for somebody they don't want to do it for themselves anymore they get tired so if you do something like content creation graphic design website management um, like any of those things virtual assistant services you can raise your MRR by having a monthly done for you service because I promise you, boo, when you start, you, they're not, not, not going to want you to stop because then they realize, oh my God, I'm going to have to do all this work. Okay. And, and they don't want to do all that work. <laughs> all right. So that's number three. Number four is an online course with a payment plan. So I suggest if you do an online course with a payment plan that you make sure that your online course is um the amount of time it takes to complete your online course is similar to the amount of the length of the payment plan right so like if it's gonna take them about three months to complete it then there's a three-month payment plan option what i don't want you to do is have a course that only takes two weeks to go through and then they get on a payment plan option for six months because then they're most likely not going to complete it right um you want to make sure that that payment plan matches up with the amount of content that's in that course. So this doesn't really work for many courses. It works for courses that are a little bit longer, okay? Courses that are a little bit longer. <coughs> but online course with a payment plan. And hypothetically, right, you could put three months worth of content in a course and somebody goes through it in a weekend. It's going to happen. Some people are like that. Um, people who are like that are actually, most of the time, those are people who pay in full or they take the shorter payment plan because they know it's not going to take them that long. So they already, like, that's already a psychological thing that is figured out. Like, but what you can do in order to create the effect of the course being three months long is when you put in, like, when you build out your course, build it out in modules. Hey, here's module one, week one, week two, week three, week four. Module two, week one, week two, week three, week four. The way that you input your information into the course system, the way you organize that information is going to tell the person how to digest that information, right? Like, honestly, a lot of the stuff we learned in school could have, been learned, could, could have been learned a lot quicker, but it wasn't because the way they structured the lesson plan made it seem like we needed a whole year to learn algebra and we really did it okay so realize that you as the teacher you as the coach you as the expert in whatever subject area you teach you have the ability to create that psychological box that says do this on this week do this on this week do this first then do this you can also use like if your course platform has a drip feature where week one unlocks and then week two doesn't unlock until it's actually week two or week three doesn't unlock until it's actually week three having that drip feature and using the locking will increase the likelihood that someone's going to finish their payment plan also because they can't like the payment plan is on the same time schedule that the drip schedule is on and so they will not have access to the full course until they actually finish it. Okay, so that helps too. 
Number, that was number four, online course of the payment plan. Number five is exclusive access to quarterly classes. So a lot of people do monthly memberships, but you could also do a quarterly membership um, where you have some type of classes, certain classes quarterly, or you release a video bundle quarterly or something like that. I listed this because uh, a lot of us, like when we create things like digital products, we assume that people are going to pick it up like this because we're really good at whatever it is that we're teaching. <clears throat> but honestly, people need time. So quarterly works better for some industries and some concepts because it takes a little bit more time to actually watch that information, grasp the concept, and then put it to work. Like people who are like, I'm going to teach you how to run a six-figure business. Take this six-week course. It takes longer than six weeks to learn that. You're going to have to try and fail, try and fail, try and fail, try and fail before you get to the six-figure point. So it would actually benefit the student if that six weeks was spread out a little bit longer. Not saying you had to life coach for longer than six weeks, but spread that six weeks out a little bit longer put the babies on a payment plan and let them actually process the information in a realistic way okay we are when you think about teaching it's not hey i'm teaching fifth graders fifth grade math you need to be thinking i'm teaching second graders fifth grade math first graders first grade math because when you're learning something new it feels like a foreign language like, I realize when I talk to people and they're like, I don't know what systems are. Like, I don't even know what you're saying right now. And I'm like, okay, let's take it all the way back to the beginning. Expect that, right? Because it's new. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know anything about finances. Don't ask me shit about finances. I have no idea. Don't ask me nothing about taxes. I don't know. I know that I have to pay them. Like, you know what I'm saying? But if somebody was to teach me, or if I was to enroll in a course... I want them to go step by step by step and I need them to treat me like a baby because not even like a baby. I just need the instructions to be really detailed because I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm new. So quarterly classes, exclusive access to quarterly classes um, really helps too. If you're somebody who does a lot of series, like, I, oh, I'm going to teach a video series that's five days long, or I'm going to teach such and such that's six or seven days long, or I'm going to do a challenge once a quarter. And if you join this quarterly membership, you can get in on the challenge every single time for free or whatever the series is that I'm teaching that quarter, you can get in for free. You can do that. Okay. Then, uh, number six, number six is monthly templates or shortcuts. So if you have any type of template, whether it's a spreadsheet, a word document, fill in the blank, Canva templates, anything like that, you can have a monthly for that as well, where you send that out. I've been thinking about doing it, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um, because I do want to add to my MRR, just like I'm telling y'all to add to yours. Uh, but if you have the ability to be able to create like caption templates or copywriting templates, email templates, um, you know, graphic design templates, people can subscribe and they can get access to those each month. This is an option that you do not have to coach. If you offer done for you services right now, you should be able to create templates and some based off of something that you do. You should have templates, right? You don't start from scratch every single time. You may sometimes, but for the most part, you probably don't start from scratch. Or if you've been in the game for a long time, you don't start from scratch. Like I've done so much content that I no longer have to start from scratch. I always have something to pull from that I've created in the past because it's been six years. So you can offer those templates on a monthly subscription and then <clears throat> you don't have to coach. You don't have to do nothing live. You don't have to teach none of that. So if you don't want to do that, like if you're an introvert, that might work better for you. I actually have a subscription that I pay for that is from a photographer and it's stock photos and I pay by the quarter. So each quarter is $297, which comes out to $99 a month. You get access to the stock photo library and every so often, probably two or three times a month, she does professional photo shoots and adds stock photos to the library and you can just use them for whatever you want. Like it could be that easy. Like you don't have to have a lot of contact with people. So that's number six. And number seven, last but not least, VIP discount or first chance purchase, okay? So this one is not one that I see a ton, but it's really helpful. I see, I see like airlines use it sometimes. 
Um, I've seen hair companies use it sometimes where, uh, or not hair companies, but people who make wigs, you pay a monthly price so that you get first dibs to book on the schedule or you get access to exclusive discounts um, or you get access to like special pricing, but you're still paying that monthly fee or that yearly fee. So for example, um, if you've ever flown Frontier, I only fly two airlines, Frontier and Delta, that's it. When I fly Frontier, I'm a Discount Den member. So I paid $59 for the year and all of my plane tickets are cheaper than everybody else's. Like by $10. $10, $15 most of the time. So that is creating a baseline for them on that monthly recurring revenue. Now, $59, $59 a year is very low. I don't know what they're using that for. Maybe for gas money or something like that. But I see like, for example, I've seen um, a wig maker charge a monthly fee. So her clients pay $29 a month to be able to be the first to access her booking schedule. That $29 does not go towards the actual service or anything like that, but it puts you in the front of the line. So it's like, oh, I get to skip the line. People will pay to skip the line, like a monthly fee to skip the line. I will, especially if it's something you're getting every single month, right? Like if I released a VIP discount, a first chance membership, where I was like, okay, you guys can pay $29 a month. And when you pay this $29 a month, what that means is you get 30% off all of my services whenever you want. And you get to skip the line. And you don't have to wait. If your order comes in behind five other orders and none of them are VIP, yours gets fulfilled first. People will pay for that. <clears throat> and it seems like, oh, $29, like it's not that much, blah, 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 blah. But if you got 10, 20 people paying $29 on top of, because $29 doesn't go towards the service, if you got 10 or 20 people, because 10 people is what, 290, which means 20 people would be about $500. So that's, I'm sorry, $600. So that adds $600 to your baseline each month, $600 to your monthly recurring revenue each month. And then... They're also paying for the service, which means if they're going to pay that $29, that means they're also spending more money because they're shopping. Because if they weren't shopping, they wouldn't need to pay the $29 to skip the line. Okay, so it's $600 monthly recurring revenue, but then it's also boosting your cash flow because people are paying for more services, more consistently. So you've got higher spenders, okay? You're attracting higher spenders. People who pay to skip the line are people who usually spend more money. They spend more money or they have more money to spend. It just depends on if what you have is a priority for them or not. But you can make it a priority for them through your marketing. Okay, so VIP discount first chance purchase is a really good way to increase that consistent revenue, all right? Um, and that $600 can be used like to hire a part-time employee or something like that to take care of the overflow of orders. So if you use that monthly recurring revenue to take care of or to put on payroll to take care of that overflow, then all that other money you're making is your money. So you're not having to pay your payroll out of pocket. Ooh, look at that. You're not having to pay your payroll out of pocket because of the way you structured it. And the way you're using your system. So it's not just having the systems. Oh, I got an email marketing system. Oh, I got a payment processor. Oh, I got a website. Oh, I got Sezzle. Oh, I got lead pages. It's not just having the systems. It's are you using the systems to strategically grow your business in a way that doesn't require you to expend more energy, more energy, more energy. Because the hustle culture shit is dead. Like it's dead. Okay. So I'm going to run back through these seven ways. And then I saw a couple of questions. So I'm going to answer those questions while you guys are on here. I am going to teach a seven day. I'm teaching a seven day series on sales. It is a group coaching private series. So I'm only taking 10 people. Well, I got eight more spots left. I got two people in my DMs that are like, I'm ready right now. So I have eight spots left. I'm doing a seven day group coaching. It is a blitz teaching on sales strategy, sales skills, pitching on video, 
all that kind of stuff just becoming more comfortable with sales without feeling like the icky salesman um and so we're going to be doing that well i'm going to be doing that with the help of some of my team members who are going to be there with me but i'm going to be teaching you guys about sales like how how do i make money you know how do i say hey go buy this without sounding like i'm forcing someone to buy something like i don't want to force you to buy anything i want to offer you something that you need give you payment options and then you can make the decision whether you want to step up to the plate or not right so i'm going to be teaching you guys how to do that in a more comfortable way um it starts on may 2nd it's seven days long it's from may 2nd to may uh sixth no that doesn't make sense second third fourth five six seven eight may 2nd through may 8th look at me with the i'm so slow y'all it's May 2nd through May 8th. The live group coaching sessions are going to be at noon Eastern Standard Time on each of those days. You do have access to replays. So if you happen to miss one or you can't show up every single day live, you do get access to the replays. But there's only 10 spots, which well, there's eight spots left. Okay. It's paid. It's $297. But hey, listen, if your service is $297 at least or your course is at least $297, it's completely worth it if for you to get in there and book at least one additional client and then take those skills and multiply that money. If you're interested, send me a direct message. Send me a direct message because I only got eight spots left, okay? So it's going to be a seven-day sales school. We're going to go through it, all right? All right, so let me run back through these seven ways to generate consistent income as a coach. If you're just dropping in, we're talking about creating more monthly recurring revenue so that you have a higher baseline of how much money you're going to make each month and you're not in a feast and famine cycle where I'm eating, I got a lot of money. Oh, my God, I got so much money. I got a lot of money. I had a bad day, right? You don't want to do that. So ongoing coaching is number one. General membership is number two. Monthly done for you service is number three. Online course with a payment plan is number four. Exclusive access to quarterly classes is number five. Monthly templates and shortcuts is number six. And VIP discount or first chance purchase is number seven. All right. <coughs> Ooh. I need to drink some water. Let's look at these questions. I saw a few. Okay, here we go. How do we stretch out a program to 12 months? You either need to add more content or be more detailed with the content you already have. So if you already have a program that's three months long or that's, if you have one that's four weeks long, it's gonna be hard to stretch out to 12 months. But if you have a program that's like three, you know, 12 weeks, six weeks or 12 weeks, you can stretch that out. And you can stretch out a, a 12 week to be six months long. You just have to, like I said, go back through your curriculum and either make what your your curriculum is, either make what you already have more detailed or add a little bit more. Now, I wouldn't add to the back end. I would add to the front end. And what I mean when I say that is what you don't want to do is teach them too much information, right? Because then it gets a little bit overwhelming for someone who's new at something. What you want to do is add more to the front end. So you want to add more prerequisite work. So whatever you have in your program that's three months, think about what comes before that three months, the baby steps that come before that, the preparation that comes before that, what skills are going to set them up to get a better result on the back end if they do a little bit more work or a little bit more steps on the front end i would so i would add to the front not the back but you can stretch out a 12 week to be like six months and you can stretch out maybe like a four or five month program to be 12 months okay also think about doing things like inviting in guest speakers um hot seat coaching sessions like just different things okay um done for you in personal development the thing with personal development is there's not really a lot of done for you that you can do i mean well it kind of depends right some people count finances as personal development and if you count finances as personal development there is some done for you stuff you can do um but if you're talking about like life coaching and stuff like that leadership coaching um there's not a lot of done for you like they have to do that work <laughs> they got to do most of that work now 
it depends though because mm, I could see like a life coach or a leadership coach having done for you in the way that like hey I'll help you plan out your schedule or I'll tell you what opportunities you should take on based off of your personality test results or I can give you a life relationship audit or whatever like that that's kind of like done for you but for the most part in personal development like people need to do their own work they gotta do the work it's not really a way around that <laughs> do you recommend think ific or teachable for courses i know somebody who uses think ific and she loves it she might be in here are you in here dion <laughs> she loves it so she'll tell you think ific um i don't really use it that much so i can't I, i've never really used it that much i only tried to use it one time and i didn't really like it but that could just be my personal opinion um so out of those two options i'm gonna say teachable but the thing i don't like about teachable is this like i'm not giving you a really good answer um my really good answer is i would use podia <laughs> because it's super easy to use but the thing i don't like about teachable is their payment their payouts never line up with what they're supposed to line up with so like if it tells you like okay let's say if you get paid with stripe and your Stripe account makes less than $5,000 in 90 days, you're on a two-day payout. You don't have instant payouts, right? So if somebody pays you today, it's Wednesday, you don't get that money until Friday. On Teachable, if somebody pays you on, on their lowest payment plan, if somebody pays you today, you don't get paid until next month on the lowest plan. They don't explain that to you very well, but you don't get paid until next month. So you get paid on the first of the month, 30 days after the payment processes. If you go to the second tier plan, which I think is $99 a month, the first one I think is $29 a month. If you go to the second plan, that's $99 a month, you get two day payouts, but like, It'll say in the system, it'll say paid out. Like if they paid to, if somebody pays for your course today, it'll say paid out on Friday, but then you won't see it until Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It's like really weird. I don't like that. I need my money to be where you said my money was going to be at the time you said it was going to be there. <laughs> so I guess I should go with think if it with that for that question because I don't like people playing with my money. But that's my thing with Teachable. It's gotten a little bit more complicated to build on Teachable than it used to be so i think that's why uh, <laughs> i went through those real fast i'm gonna save this replay what system can automatically take payments each month stripe as a payment processor so you can hook up stripe to your wix or shopify or Squarespace. You can hook it up to one of those website providers. You can also hook up Stripe to Samcart, Lead Pages, Podia. All of those can do automatic pay monthly payments, but you have to have Stripe in order to do automatic monthly payments. PayPal is really weird. Sometimes it'll let you do it. It'll let you do it if you set it up directly through PayPal. So instead of like having your website where it has a buy now button, you have to actually have a PayPal button for you to do automatic monthly payments. So Stripe is what I would go with. Stripe is what I use and Stripe is what I would go with. Digital Design Tamar says, I've worked with both and Teachable was harder. Okay, so there we go. That That helps you too. Like just asking other people like, did you work with it? how was it when you worked with it you know um yes paypal plays with money too i don't use paypal anymore because they were sending too much of my money to the reserves like you know how you uh they can hold your money for a certain amount of time so for me and done for you i do done for you services <coughs> i have people on payroll i can't have my money being tied up like i gotta pay people i have to pay other people so I need my money to come on time so that I can allocate the funds correctly without being confused about oh, I took this from over here and this from over here. 
to make this payroll so then when this hits back then i can do this like no that's too much they hold money too much they hold money too much so i'm like i'm not i'm not playing with y'all <laughs> i'm not playing with y'all paypal for somebody who processed multiple six figures on paypal i don't like paypal so yeah that's dead for me all right y'all that is all for this morning's live i'm about to go ahead and grab some breakfast and get my makeup done because i'm actually um going to be creating content today and guest teaching at 12. um so i'll see y'all later but i'm leaving this in the replay so you can watch it remember send me a direct message if you want to get in on that seven day sales intensive uh with me i only got eight more spots left it's 297 all right see y'all later